Hey you guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video and for today's video we're going to be looking at for those that are getting into this whole pen testing field and for those that are new on, on trying Kali Linux. Now some of the things that you need to do after you install Kali Linux on your system or on a virtual machine, what you want to do are several things to actually make Kali Linux a little bit more secure you guys. If you're new to this channel go ahead and make sure to subscribe, make sure to hit that bell button as well if you want to get notifications and don't forget to drop a like if you like this video you guys so again you guys we're gonna be looking at what what are the things that we need to do after we install Kali Linux and their things are pretty simple and if you're not new to Kali Linux then I highly suggest that if you're missing one of these steps then you need to go ahead and do them now what we're going to look at the first thing that we power up Kali Linux you guys and it's pretty much update your system or your operating system in this case is the app space update now most likely you're going to be in root so there should be no issue here as far as running this command but later on we're going to see as far as adding a new user now the second thing that we need to do here is do a disk upgrade or an upgrade now these are the things that you want to look into if you already had Kali Linux already installed and if you haven't updated or you haven't upgraded the Kali Linux to the latest then this is the way to do it to actually you know update the whole operating system itself now I highly recommend that if you haven't updated in a while so other step that you need to do you guys it's very important because when you install Kali Linux it comes with the default password and you want to change that by doing the passwd now the default is pretty much Tor with double O so you might want to change that to your own password and please make sure it's not easily guessable otherwise it will be highly likely that it can be brute forced by some type of you know tool out there so please make sure to uh, pick a strong password you guys so the next step that we need to do is actually reissue or reconfigure our SSH server, you guys. Now we're going to CD into the SSH, or in this case, the ETC SSH, right? And basically what I'm going to show you guys is the SSH keys that is currently installed on this Kali Linux system. Now by default, it's going to come with these keys. And what we're going to do is pretty much reconfigure, like I said, the open SSH server and in this case going to generate new keys for this Kali Linux system now in order to not make things break or anything we're going to actually make a directory here and I'm pretty much gonna call this old something old SSH keys or anything like that so in order to do that you're gonna issue the following command which is the mkdir space and then basically the name of the directory that you want to name it in this case I'm just naming mine old underscore SSH keys and I'm gonna simply just clear the terminal and I'm gonna move the current SSH underscore host keys or whatever I'm gonna go ahead and move those to the directory that I just created in this case is going to be the old underscore SSH keys now this is a command is pretty much MV underscore SSH underscore host and then the asterisk is pretty much a wildcard to actually tell the console that it's going to uh, move all those keys with that specific pattern now at this point once you move those to the directory that you just created what you're going to do is issue the following command you guys and this is going to be the command to actually reconfigure the open SSH server and in this case is going to be the dpkg dash reconfigure open SSH and it's going to be dash server now in this case is going to do its thing is going to reissue generate new keys and at this point what we're going to do is pretty much do an ls to make sure that it indeed has created the keys when we ran that command and as you can see here we have these SSH underscore keys now in order to make sure that it's not the same keys as before you guys what we're going to do that is very important to actually see if there's any discrepancy in the keys or anything of that sort and we're going to produce some hashes you guys now at this point I'm gonna use SHA-256 don't use the MD5 because otherwise 
Uh, I mean, it's not secure. I mean, it's it's okay, but it it's known to have some vulnerabilities, right? So in this case, you're going to do the SHA-256 sum, and then you're going to issue that pattern with that wildcard, which is SSH underscore host. And basically what you're going to do is pretty much maximize your terminal or whatever. If you already have it maximized, that's okay. Now, what you're going to do is look at the random strings, you guys. You're going to look at them and make sure they're different. And if they're different, that means that they're, the values for those keys are different as well. And we pretty much reissue the whole SSH keys again. So that is very important to do. So please make sure to get that done. And what we're going to do actually next is going to add a new user, you guys. Now, in Kali Linux, we have the root user and that's the only user available so what you're going to do is issue the following command which is the add user and I'm going to name this none root now once you actually pick a username of your choice what you're going to do is just issue that command and issue a new password just fill in the fields here as full name whatever it's optional you don't really have to do it you can just keep on pressing the enter button and or the enter key and it's just basically going to tell you the information is correct and just hit Y and that should complete that process now again really important that you issue a new user after you install Kali Linux you guys you don't want to be running root all the time because that's really dangerous to do imagine if you get a RCE to your Kali Linux and you're running as root then that's gonna be a whole different thing you guys what you want to do is add sudo rights to that user that you just created why because you want to keep a standard user but with some rights to actually run system commands and to do that it's the following command which is a user mod space dash a space dash g and then basically just input the username that you want to add those rights to now again you guys that is pretty much it what you need to do after you install Kali Linux now in order to actually secure there's a whole different area where we can go into as far as securing Kali Linux now if you like this video don't forget to hit that like button and also for those who are new to this channel please make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell button as well to get notified on the next video and again you guys I appreciate you guys watching these videos don't change it I'll be right back thank you